Welcome back to Working Faith, where we take a spiritual approach to career success. I'm your host, Jalen Isley, and today we're diving into a very special follow-up episode. So if you tuned in last week, you know that we had an enlightening conversation with Professor Dr. George Grant about the intersection of spiritual wellness and teamwork. His insights on how spirituality, especially the principle of love, can enhance our interactions with team members and clients, all of it truly inspiring. But I don't like to just hear good ideas without implementing them. So I have spent the past week applying some of those principles in my own life. Now, the first thing I had to do was start off by actually identifying all of the teams that I'm a part of. And let me tell you, the list was longer than I thought it would be. Probably not as long as it needs to be. I probably need more teams. <laughs> but it was definitely longer than I thought it would be. From my interfaith seminary study group to my new bachata dance team that I just joined. I had to try out for that, by the way. It's, I'm really excited that I made the team. Um, but all of those people, everyone in those groups plays a unique role in my life. This includes my career coaching clients. It includes the Goodwill Employment Specialist team um, that I recently joined, my peers in the Women on the Rise Professional Network, um, and of course, the vibrant community at the Greater Orlando Center for Spiritual Living, which just gives me all of the encouragement and love and support that I need for my spiritual well-being. But that's not all. That's not where the list ends. There's also my Faith Business Alliance team at my church. I go to five different places of worship on Sunday. It's it's a good time. <laughs> I also have the dedicated members of the Arts and Letters Committee that I lead for the Orlando Alumni Chapter of <clears throat> Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And last but certainly not least, I can't forget the invaluable support for my contractors and my financial advisors and my legal team. They all keep me moving and keep my business moving in the right direction. It's a blessing to have the opportunity to contribute to and be supported by so many people. And as I reflected on how each of these teams are helping me build my legacy, a question dawned upon me. How can I sustainably pour into them as they have into me. Special emphasis on the word sustainably because social interaction is exhausting, especially for somebody like me. But it's pretty much the basis of working on a team. So, you know, I have to figure out a way to make that work. Here's what I believe we can all do to sustainably show some love to the teams that support us. So the very first thing that we can do is acknowledgement a thank you, a nod of appreciation, a shout out in a meeting, all of that can go a long way. So earlier today, I met with my deanery from my seminary school and the call uh, took place over the course of an hour. After the call ended, I sent a quick text to my dean letting him know that I thought he was doing a great job of leading our group. I actually meant to do it in front of everyone during the call, but I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did send him that text afterwards. And it's a simple yet powerful way to let your team members know that their hard work isn't going unnoticed. Many times I wonder if what I'm doing is worthwhile. And just as I'm about to abandon ship, someone reaches out to me and lets me know that my work matters to them. And it keeps me going. So don't sleep on acknowledging your team. Make that a habit. Make that a ritual, in fact, if possible. Number two, active listening. Engage with your team members, understand their needs, aspirations, and challenges. This creates a deeper connection. Now, this one is a bit of a struggle for me. Not only am I opinionated, I'm quite in love with my opinions, and I really want to make sure you hear all of them. Honestly, it's the only reason why most of us create our podcast. We want to share our opinions without interruption. <laughs> but that doesn't get you very far when you're working on a team. So I'm trying to listen 80% of the time and talk 20% of the time. So when I speak, it's relevant and it's impactful. I'm sure that listening percentage could be even higher than 80%, but look, give me some grace, all right? God's not through with me yet. So number three, moving on, we're moving on. Number three, celebrating successes. No matter how small, celebrate the victories. Earlier this week, we celebrated Women on the Rise's recent grant award from 100 Women Strong. Women on the Rise has been working tirelessly for many years, many, many years to serve the greater Central Florida area. Receiving this grant was a huge win for the organization, but there were so many hurdles 
that were cleared along the way leading up to that moment. And the founder, Arlene Blake, love her, she celebrated and encouraged her team throughout the entire journey. Why? Because it boosts morale and it reinforces a sense of belonging and achievement. It's not rocket science. And there are so many ways to celebrate small wins and large victories. So the next time you're scrolling through social media, look up fun, unique ways to celebrate with your team. If you feel like you don't have time for this, you need to make time for it because listen, the ROI is worth it all. Speaking of time, we're actually out of it for today, but I'll close by sharing that it's amazing to see how the principles of love can be used as a tangible tool in fostering stronger, more cohesive teams because our teams, especially mine, in all their various forms are integral to our success and well-being. So let's remember to nurture these relationships with love, respect, and gratitude. Additionally, let's remember to subscribe, rate, and share this show with others. <laughs> I'd love to hear your comments, and you can always engage directly with me by joining the Working Faith Group on LinkedIn. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next week with more tips on how you can take a spiritual approach to career success and work your faith. Good day.